Hello all and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to show you how I made this Rodarte inspired dress from scratch. And when I say from scratch, I mean from scratch scratch because I actually designed the pattern on this fabric as well. When I saw Selena's music video, I just thought her dress was so beautiful. Then I found out that not only was it made from 100% silk, it's also almost $3,000. So I just thought it would be fun to show you guys what goes into making a designer dress like this and just have fun with it. So I hope you enjoy. After many hours of searching for similar fabric, I decided to make my own with a pattern printing service. I knew I wasn't going to be able to perfectly replicate this, and I also wanted to just make it my own, so I found an image of daisies and started sketching. I digitized my sketch, cleaned it up, and then started playing with color. My first print was more closely inspired by the original, but I didn't really love it, so I tried a few other options. Then finally, with the help of all of you on Instagram, I decided to go for the lilac colorway. So I ordered crepe de chine fabric with my print on it and was very happy with the result. To create the pattern, I took a close look at the original garment. It has a square sweetheart neckline. The shoulder area has a panel. Then the bust area has two pleats at the neckline with gathers at the base. There's also a slightly gathered or pleated sash. The sleeves are leg of mutton with some kind of pleating or gathering in the center of the sleeve and gathering on the underarm seam. The skirt is an A-line skirt, which most definitely was cut on the bias. And the back is plain with the sash meeting at the invisible zipper. The hem on the back is a few inches longer than the front. And then there's, of course, the little daisies added at the center front and the sleeve, which I'm not going to include in my final. So with this knowledge, I got to work on my pattern, starting with my torso and sleeve blocks. On the front, I marked the bust radius, neckline, and shoulder panel, and empire waist shape. I also created a small dart into the bust neckline for contour. This will keep the neckline from gaping. On the back, I marked the waistline and combined the two back darts into one. I also adjusted the neckline to match the front. You will also notice that I took off some width on the side seams back and front for a more snug fit, and I also lowered the underarm seams a bit. I closed the darts on the skirt, creating that A-line shape. I did end up increasing that flare later though. On the front, I then closed the neckline and side darts, which further opened the dart at the base, which I split into two darts to spread the fullness. I've also created two guidelines from the corner of the neckline. I open these to create the pleats. Then I add my seam allowance and we are moving on to the sleeve. To create the leg of mutton sleeve, I start with some triangular lines that meet in the center of the sleeve. I cut straight down from the top and spread the triangular panels about two inches each. Then I connected the shapes to create the new sleeve. Later, I added about two inches more height to the cap of the sleeve, which really helps create the proper shape when it's gathered. I then spread the arm of the sleeve lengthwise so that I can gather it in the underarm seam. Then I added the seam allowances to complete it. I also created the lining sleeve, which is just a normal sleeve with a bit of gather at the top and about the same width as the original sleeve. The liner for the rest of the dress uses pretty much the same pattern as the shell. I just take an eighth off of the edge of the front and back necklines and raise the underarms a quarter inch. 
I then printed out my pattern to test it, cut it out, and made my first sample. Watch out! Definitely tight here, so I want to add more of a flare out from the waist, and this area is good. I just need to concentrate the gathers more up here because if we look at the original, the gathers kind of stop right here. And then the sleeve laying very flat, and I have to kind of pull it out. I think I'm going to add some height to the sleeve cap, and I think that's what's going to allow it to sit more less flat. Okay, so I've made my adjustments. This piece, I changed the area of the dip. It was more in between this area, but I brought it to the center front and a little bit over. That's where I'm going to concentrate my gathers. I didn't change much on the sleeve. All I did was add some height. The back bodice, I took in a quarter inch here, a quarter inch here. For the back skirt, I also took it in a quarter inch here in correspondence with the bodice. I added some flare to the center back, adjusted the flare on the side seam. Finally, the center front, everything up here stays the same. I just basically added flare and length. It's time to cut the real fabric. <laughs> When cutting light fabric like this, you either want a rotary blade and cutting mat, <gasps> kitty, or what also works very well is tracing the pattern with weight securing its placement. Then you can take a pair of scissors and cut along your markings. This way, even if you shift the fabric, you won't skew your piece as long as you're cutting along your trace lines. I actually really like this method since my cutting mats aren't quite big enough for the skirt pieces. I also cut two 20 by 6 inch pieces on the bias for either side of the sash area. My lining is an off-white Bamberg and I use two pieces of organza inside the sleeve to create the body and fullness I want to see. Starting with the bust pieces, I fold the pleats towards the center front. Then I sewed a pair of large stitches along the bottom of the bust piece and gathered it according to the skirt. Then I attach the shoulder panels to the bust. Next, I sew the center seam of the bust pieces. Then attach this assembled piece to the skirt. For the back, I simply attach the bodice to the skirt. Then I iron all of these seams. Also keep in mind every seam that I'm sewing for the shell, I'm also sewing for the lining. Also make sure that you are ironing all of these seams as you go. Make sure you use a press cloth for delicate fabric. Now I don't know about you, but I love to sew in zippers. Said no one ever. This back seam is a little tricky, first because of the light fabric and second because it's partly on the bias and I don't want it to stretch. And I had the bright idea of ironing at the hottest setting without a press cloth. <gasps> I was literally thinking in my mind, I should be using a press cloth, but whatever. <laughs> After replacing the back bodice piece, I applied the fusing with the press cloth. Since my zipper tape is only 3 eighths and my seam allowance is half an inch, I'm laying the zipper an eighth from the edge so that I actually sew it at its intended half inch seam allowance. With zippers, I usually tend to base them in first so that I can more accurately keep it in place for sewing. 
After basting to both sides, I'm closing up the bottom of the skirt with a stitch, stopping just above the end of the zipper. Then press open. Before permanently sewing up the zipper, sew up your bias strips, then put the dress on a form or on yourself and pin the sides in place. Then pin the sash to the empire waist following the curve. This way you'll be able to establish the angle at which to cut the sash at the center back. <gasps> with this angle established, I cut two identical pieces with added seam allowance and insert them into the zipper seam. Then I'm ready to sew in the zipper. I use an invisible zipper foot and make sure I get as close to the zipper teeth as it will allow. This will ensure that it actually turns out to be an invisible zipper. With right sides facing, sew the shoulder seams on both the shell and lining. Then with right sides facing, sew around the neckline and down the zipper. When sewing the lining to the zipper, use a regular zipper foot to get close to the teeth. Trim your seam allowance, clip any curves, then sew up the back opening on the lining, pressing open after. Then understitch the neckline, stopping about an inch from the center back. Then iron this. You will find that the understitching really helps with ironing and keeping the lining from peeking out. Take your lining sleeve and sew a pair of large stitches between the notches and gently gather. Then attach to the lining armhole only with right sides together and sew. With the lining sleeves attached, we're going to assemble the lining and shell side seams. Place your lining front and back together, matching seams. Do the same with your shell and sew up these side seams. You will want to iron the seams open and flat as well. For my sleeve, I have three pieces, the shell fabric, an exact replica in organza, and a shortened organza piece. First, I layer on the full length organza on the wrong side of the shell fabric. Then after that, the shorter piece. I keep this one short because I don't want too much body in the arm of the sleeve, just in the cap. The organza will make this floppy fabric nice and firm. Stay stitch these three layers on each sleeve within the seam allowance. Then sew a double row of large stitches between the front and back notches. Then gather, pushing most of the gather towards the top of the sleeve. With the gathering complete, face the underarm seams right sides together and before sewing, I'm just checking the length of the elastic that I want to apply to this seam. After sewing and ironing the sleeve seam open, apply the elastic with a zigzag stitch, keeping it out of the sleeve seam allowance. The elastic should be a little shorter than the length you want for your sleeve. 
I considered sewing an elastic up the center of the sleeve. Instead, I pinched the fabric in little pleats and hand sewed them, just to make it look naturally bunched. Once the sleeve is complete, apply it to the shell, adjusting the gather of the sleeve to the armhole. <laughs> then sew it up. You should also sew the sleeve cap seam allowances of the lining and shell together. This will keep the lining from poking out at the neckline. To attach the shell and lining sleeve hems together, match the seams and pull through the hem of the dress and pin the hems together. Then sew and turn out. The sash is already secured in the zipper seams, so stretch it a little and secure it to the side seams, creating a little pleat in the center of the sash. Then bring it around to the front and line it up with the opposite bust curve, matching the angle of the curve. Then layer the pieces and add a little pleat. Before hand sewing this, I tried it on just to make sure everything was in the right place, and luckily it was. So then I was able to stitch it to the body. I stitched trying not to catch the outer layer of the sash. I did mess up on the side seams a bit, so I'll have to fix that, but the front turned out great. There are two layers of the hem to finish, the lining and the shell. I like to use a hem rolling foot. It will give a clean and thin hem, which will be perfect for this dress. This fabric is delicate, and because it has a rounded hem, it's stretchy. So that means it really needs to be sewn with care. I find it helpful to trim the seam allowance before sewing, and also when I'm sewing, I feed the hem in at an angle. This was much easier and more successful than trying to feed it in straight. Finish off the completed hem with a nice press. Lastly, I noticed that the zipper seam was puckering because of the excess fusing, so I warmed it up with some steam and picked off the fusing from the shell fabric and trimmed it. Then I steamed it again and it made a huge difference. And now the dress is ready to wear. Valentine's Day, y'all. I've always loved you, DeVito. Of course, of course I will marry you and wear the dress my mother wore on her wedding day. We're slaves. <laughs> <laughs>